Hello, I am Martin Fenska and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Trails of Fire. So, first of all, I, I want to apologize if you're waiting for another episode yesterday. I was just too tired. Uh, I have now five series running at the same time, so I just recorded three videos. And uh, just, I was just, as I said, too tired to record another one. And uh, here, I j just... Uh, they didn't want to risk making some stupid mistake because I wasn't able to focus on the game. So today, uh, we will try to get as close as possible to the first uh, like quest location. We'll see how far it is. But we are like... Mm, it is uh, pretty far away, or at least it's uh, like farther away than the amount of food that we have. Because the day 8 is written in red. And uh, that means... We basically can't reach it with the current amount of food. Uh, so we need to get more food. And uh, yeah, then we'll see how close we'll be able to get. Before we start moving, there is one change that I want to make. Uh, I didn't think that uh, the rusted plates will be available for our elementalist, but it works. Uh, I rarely use prepare, so I'd rather have armored advance instead. It's free and it gives us defense and allows us to move at the same time. So that's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good card. Let's make the change. And now I think we can start moving. So let's go slowly. Oh, there is something. Okay, we can go south. That's it's fine. Uh, there are two middle-aged middle-aged rattlings ahead, talking about the remains of a dwarven town that they unwittingly unearthed while digging an entrance to a burrow nearby. It sounds like they're going to try and salvage some of its content, and they're looking for laborers to help with the excavations. You notice that Adam the blacksmith is, star is staring at them uh, fixedly, clenching his jaw and his fist. Okay, let's talk to Adam. Adam tells you that he overheard the rattlings remi reminiscing about the time they spent as slavers, laughing and joking. He tells you quietly that his family was captured by rattling slavers several years ago. He spent a year trying to track them down before he was captured as well. He's convinced that... Uh, He's convinced they are dead, but it seems like that uh, has become his method of uh, coping with the mental agony of not knowing what became of them. You just... Uh, about managed to restrain him. Okay, negotiate the deal with the rattlings. You apologize for intruding and tell them you couldn't help but overhear about their plan. You offer your assistance in exchange for a share of anything valuable they find. Seeing as they clearly won't be able to manage it without you, they accept. Oh, okay, we have to travel there. Uh, can you please get some food? I'm always getting nervous when I'm down to like three food. Tired. Guess he'll be fighting tired for some time. Oh, there's a location where we can rest. There is a large stone figure standing on a pedestal in a distance facing away from you towards the sun. Mist has crept through the far end of the channel and is uh, diffusing the sunlight, creating an eerie glow. As he continues, he great arches carved into the rock, with each arch being an ending with a wide stone pillar. Mm. One of the sculptures has a fork crack running down its arm. With enough force, you might be able to dislodge it uh, so as to see the face. With a combined force of two of you, the arm comes away, striking the stone floor with a thud which echoes for several seconds around the cavernous chamber. The eyes of the figure are narrow, like um, it is weeping, with a tear emerging from the corner of the statue's left eye, fashioned from a pale blue gemstone. What could possibly go wrong? You dislodge the gemstone with the help of a small blade. You walk towards the large stone figure in the distance. From behind you can see a carved stone cloak. You walk around the front, you see the statue of a young hooded elf staring at the sun with one hand clasping the other. She has one green eye. There is a small indentation where the pupil of the other eye should be, but it looks like it's been taken. Yep, fill the hole with the gemstone you've just taken. Uh, it's a perfect fit and the statue looks complete, complete again. You 
ready your things and begin to set off, but then a shaft of sunlight filters through the mist. The moment is uh, interrupted by a sudden uh, creaking noise eman emanating from the statue. You walk around the back and find the outline of a hidden chamber with writing above it uh, that is now visible. It reads, Erected in memory of Ignati, the last but not least of the elves. The door opens when you push it, uh, when you push it, and inside you find a narrow shelf with uh, an item given as an offering. Nice, really nice. Uh, yeah, we definitely need a shield with with protector. So. That is something that'll help a lot. We can equip this shield here, so it's another block that we have now available. And Protector is massive. It's one of the strongest cards uh, for the way that I play. I'm always looking for a shield with uh, Protector, then everything usually becomes much easier. Sucks that we are tired, but I don't want to like set up a camp in the middle of nowhere, especially when there are more locations this close. Just hope you won't have to fight. Uh, as you enter a small human settlement, you see a cloaked figure running towards you. The figure keeps glancing back to see if anyone is in pursuit and appears to be clutching something to his or her chest. It looks suspiciously like the figure has just carried out a robbery, but then again, he or she might be a victim fleeing from an attacker. As she approaches, you see that it is a human girl with short hair and a face streaked with mud. If you grab her and turn her over to the town's guards, they are likely to remove her hand if she has been caught stealing before. Eh, have Jar grab her and hold her firmly. Jar grabs the girl by the arm and holds on to her firmly. In her right hand, she's clasping a large jewel. You ask her where she got it from, and uh, she tells you that she is uh, just trying to help her family survive. Who cares? You grab her right hand and seize the jewel. She curses you and uh, trudges off. She'll probably be off stealing something else before too long, so you don't worry too much about her fate. Mm. Inspecting the jewel, it's a reddish orange color and it seems to shimmer in the light. It almost looks like a flickering a flame. It feels like an ancient artifact of significant value. But it's for arches. I mean, anyone can use it because perfect aim. Uh, buffs up melee attacks as well, but I'm not a big fan of this combination. Offensive stance isn't bad, but the perfect aim... If it was 3, it would be great, but for 1 willpower, it's actually quite bad usually. There are a few combinations when this would be strong, but it also takes up 1 slot in the inventory, right? So overall, I don't think it's that good. We'll take it, of course. And nothing else. Well, we can now rest. Um, do we have room for it? No, we can't even use it probably. Yeah, we can't use it even. And we definitely don't want to give it to our elementalist because it's attacks from offensive stance. And it's also melee on range attacks from perfect aim. So I don't think it would help our spells at all. So yeah, we will just sell the gem. Um, no injuries. You don't have proper materials for, for crafting yet. Hone equipment. I don't think that I want to remove anything from our equipment. Uh... Maybe driving cold. I'm really not using this card like ever. But maybe it's time to try it at some point. I think I don't want to do anything. I'll just rest. Okay, we are down to 1.9 food, so we definitely need more. Break camp. Come on, there has to be food somewhere. I 
You enter the remains of a large living world town. Before long, Malkin spots a group of hybrids who seem to be busy trying to rebuild a handful of house, uh, a handful of buildings. They seem to be well stocked with equipment and provisions. An armed band comes towards you and immediately demands that the party leaves the area. Outsiders are not welcome. I don't want to, like, barter. I just take it. The hybrid warriors are more than eager to fight to defend what is theirs. Not for long, hopefully. Oh, whoa, whoa, what the heck is this? I don't think I've ever seen hybrid berserker. Enrage. Every time this character is damaged, move two spaces towards the attacker and gain plus one damage until the end of the next turn. Huh. So I just want to kill this. Or, yeah, we want to kill this in one turn, basically. Start with protector, nice. So we won't be using driving call, we won't be using calm trip. We want the protector up. We won't be using swipe. We want to oh, oh, oh. We want to use both these cards. Use spark here. Discard stab and move forward. Next. Yep, that's exactly what I didn't want. But at least the bear circuit wasn't able to attack. Clash is... Actually, is it bad? I'm not quite sure what I want to do here. Probably want to move back. Yeah, show the way wouldn't give me enough movement for the warrior, so it wasn't the way to go. I think I will. It's a lot of damage. I'm thinking about keeping the clash. If I. Discard unstable blast. Use frostbolt here. Want to reduce the damage. Then move here. Move the elementalist. I need to use the bulwark, so I'll be discarding the the smet soul. Use the bulwark, and this is the protector working. Every time we get the extra shielding, it uh, adds shielding to our other people as well. Now the question is: Do you want to use adrenaline, or do you want to use leadership? Because activating adrenaline won't give us any defense. It doesn't work with powers. The the combination of protector and powers doesn't work. I think. Leadership won't really help us too much, but to get adrenaline I have to discard Clash. Ah, so be it. Let's just get adrenaline. It could potentially give us quite a lot of willpower. And we have opening strike. Nice. Reel in. Okay, that's fun. Shop. Fine. I want to take out the the slaver first. We have execute. Can I? Can I do enough damage? S 
Searching Strike. Now, exactly this is too expensive, I think. I don't know what to expect from from the Berserkers. I'm not sure if I want to start attacking him and then find out I don't have enough damage and just like die. I won't be using execute here. I just don't have enough damage. I could just kill this one. That would actually work. I wanted to use call lightning, but I don't think I'm gonna be using that. I don't think I'm gonna be using surging strike. I need to use block, so I'll be, I'll be discarding defensive stance here. This should work. I'll keep opening strike. Discard. No, no, no don't discard swipe. Move. Yeah, do discard swipe. Uh, I should have kept probably defensive stance. No, I wouldn't be able to keep open and strike there. Okay, so this is fine. Interesting. Now we have to figure out if we have the damage. I think if I can activate the husk, but I don't think so. Expected a little bit more here, I think, but as long as we got some food, I'm happy. Um, okay. Draining strike is nice, but I don't want to build the elementalist as a melee character. Actually, may have to in the end. Static charge is amazing. I really don't like overall the cards that we are getting for the elementalist, though. The card that I want to get. It costs one willpower and uh, allows you to look at top two cards of your deck. Pick one and that card is free. And that way you can get through your deck very quickly. Get Then you can afford to get some expensive spells that you are playing for free because of that. If you get enough of these cards, you can basically go through half of your deck every turn almost. 
because you start with the first one that allows you to look at more. If you have enough of these cards in the deck, then you can, then you very often will just see another one, but that the next one will be free. So you play it for free, see next two cards, and this way you can just basically find the card that you're looking for every turn. This is the... That's the Rattlings, right? You arrive at, uh, at the entrance to the recently excavated burrow with the two Rattlings in tow. Nearby, on the left of the vestibule wall, is part of a cobbled pavement, a battered oak door, and what looks like the remains of a dwarfish stone mason's, sh stone mason's shop. Uh, there are various heavy stones preventing the Rattlings from making any further progress without your aid. Okay, revenge time. You block the exits off quietly while Adam approaches the two rattlings from behind. He brings down a club across the back of one of them. Uh, in a flush, he has delivered a heavy blow to the right foot of the other rattling. Actually... I've never tried this option. I, I know that I tried this one, but I don't remember what the what the outcome is. So let's try it. Uh, you say to Adam that the rattlings have suffered enough and order him outside the tunnel to get some air. You approach the rattlings, both uh, reading on the floor, telling them that Adam lost his wife and children to rattling slavers. You tell them you will spare their lives if they answer your questions truthfully. You ask them if rattlings murdered their human slaves, if they do not co uh, cooperate, but they insist that this is unheard of. They would always try to sell them on. They tell you rattlings very rarely enslave human women and children. You demand to know which rattling warlord would do such a thing. They both reply at the same time with the same name, Quargo. And what? Ah, another camp. Come on, we need more food. Give me a trader. A curious plume of smoke rises, unmoved by the strong winds gusting around you. As it rises higher, you see that it is completely hollow in the center, forming a gigantic ring. The terrain falls sharply, revealing a canyon below and a ring of dwellings, all which are wreathed in flame. The plume of smoke suddenly begins to trail towards you. Looking upwards, you see why a dragon. Did we see the description of a dragon? I think we did. Uh, a dragon is hovering and its uh, wing Beads are forcing the smoke in your direction. The sight of a settlement laid waste by this creature makes you all think of a Terrellon suffering the same fate. Shelter behind some rocks. Uh, your sudden movement causes... Oh, it sounds bad. Uh, movement causes dragon to scream, but instead of coming for you, it hovers for several seconds before tilting its head to the right and flying off in the distance. Okay. Waiting until you are sure it has really gone, you make your way down to the settlement below. You make your way to the settlement below and find the charred remains of three archers. The fire glows white and it's spreading towards another dwelling outside the ring. You quickly kick down the back door and uh, dark inside, dart inside to look for anything useful. But luck is against you, and the fire spreads to a barrel. Oh, come on. You try to flee, but it explodes in a shower of burning oil. You dive to the floor, but some of the uh, spattering liquid strikes the left arm of Jarrah, melting away a portion of flesh. Sounds painful. Five damage. And no food. I have a bad feeling about this. Please, please, please give me a merchant. While wandering through the streets of a rattling occupied town, you hear a commotion coming from a nearby street. Upon investigating, you find a mob of rattling thugs surrounding a figure on the floor. The group are viciously attacking and goading what looks to be a human trader who has come to the city looking for goods. I 
really should go to the marketplace. As Jerry approaches the group, one of the rattlings turns and barks a warning to stay out of this. Uh, the surrounding rattlings crowd watches you war uh, warily. I really shouldn't be doing this. What I am hoping is that if I help him, you'll be able to trade with him then, and he has food. Shana squares up to the rattling who challenged the poet. The ringleader uh, brandishes a wicked, lo wicked look, well, wicked looking knife threateningly, but Shana reacts quickly, leaving the rattling disarmed and with a painful gash in his arm. Uh, the rest of the group quickly loosen their four fire and quickly skitter into the scattering crowd. Uh, the beleaguered human, thank you. Thanks you for your aid, but warns that some of the rattlings will almost certainly be back with reinforcements. Good. You can oh, kill them then. The man gives you a small handful of obsidian for your aid. Please don't tell me that we get kicked out of we don't get kicked out of the town. While trying to make your way out of the town, you are spotted by a group of rattling guards who are clearly searching for the party. You'll need to fight through to escape the town. Okay, no trading, no food, we are screwed. I hope these guys have some food. And, uh, yeah, rattling guys, this should be easy. Uh, let's redraw. I'm trying to get a protector on the first turn. Actually, uh, what was the rest? Iron skin, adrenaline. I don't care about adrenaline yet. I don't want... Show the way. I don't want... Advance. I don't want swipe. Protector, iron skin, defensive stance, block. Next. Please don't attack the elementalist in this turn. They shouldn't have any ranged attack, so they'll mostly be just moving towards us, and I hope this guy can't reach and attack. Move three, that's not enough. Okay, fine. Whatever. And... Now I think we'll have some fun. So, let's discard the husk. Oh wait, I can't do it this way. I'll discard defend. Move. Use leadership. Set up for the exposed. Discard force missile for the opening strike. Oh great, now we got Bulwark. Nice. And I think... Now it's obvious why a protector is so strong. Think about just discarding the searching strike to move to the to the guard. Ah, uh, yeah, it will be fine. Let's move like this. Okay, come closer. Good. Iron taunt, doesn't matter. Training strike, doesn't matter. Um, what do we start with? Don't care about driving cold. Let's go opening strike. Impenetrable wall. Block. Should have started with setup, but it doesn't matter. Mm. 
Oh, really? It doesn't work that way. I thought that when I get the, the shielding, it will proc the protector and everyone else will get shielding. Okay, good to know. food no we didn't you get some stupid quiver reload draw a card for one the next range that like, you play this turn cost minus two willpower. that's actually nice draw a card and basically gain one willpower it would of course be better if it was uh, zero draw a card and next attack cost minus one willpower it would be much better because it wouldn't cost you a card right from the start to get the willpower to, to play the card. But it's, it's it's still not a bad card, just we don't have a character that will be able to use this. Actually, we do have two characters that can use it, but we don't have anyone who has ranged attacks. So, yeah, we'll just sell this one. After defeating the Rattling Guards, you quickly make your way out of the town before you come across any more. Oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Up ahead, blocking your path, is a hooded figure bearing a staff with a purple crystal set on top. Sandra Apprentice spots the figure and quickly moves to the head of the group. She starts talking uh, completely inc incomprehensibly in a language you, are, you have never heard before. The sinister looking figure tells the staff in the ground three times, which is then mirrored by Sandra. They both remove their hoods and greet each other enthusiastically before Sandra introduces her childhood friend Titania to the group. Titanal tells you of an extremely hostile community of charred nearby who have accumulated quite a few valuable objects that they don't know what to do with. Rumor has it that they store them in a shelter in the center of their settlement. Titania and Sandra embrace uh, and wish each other well before parting. Let's go. It's even in the right direction. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure that we can cross mountains. No, I, no, we can't. So we have to go around. So this settlement is too far. Uh, now we run out of food. Yeah, it's not like we die right away, but we'll just start losing health. So we have to fo find food very, very quickly. There is a settlement. That's our last hope, I think. You find the grizzly remains of a human lying near a flat, uh, large flat stone. Judging by the tooth marks across his torso, it looks like he's been half eaten by a giant wolf-like creature. Beasts have become stranger and less aware of humans since the cataclysm. Search the body. Uh, here's a couple of items that you can price for his uh, price from his mangled body. Can we just eat the corpse? Nope. And he doesn't have food. Um, yeah, I hate when uh, uh, the AI uses Reelin against me, but uh, uh, I actually don't think that Reelin is that good when you are using it. Uh, sometimes it can be great, but most of the time I just ended up discarding it, so I'll pass on the chain spear. Uh, what did we get here? Again, crap. Crap, crap, crap. I'm not a big fan of Rush. Usually don't care about the extra movement and getting movement cards. While it can be nice, most of the time you really don't care. Counter-Strike is usually bad. Resilience. Resilience is nice with the uh, Protector. The question is, what would be a replace? Defend is not that great. We have much better options. I kind of want to keep Adrenaline because sometimes it allows you to attack or use uh, many more attack cards than you usually would be able to. 
Resonance basically give us free defend at the start of each turn, so I think I will replace it. Come on, come on, come on, give me a trader. You hear the sound of a crowd chanting in the distance. Before the uh, throng comes into view, you see a human man strung up on a gallows, his legs thrashing around frantically. As you move into the main square, it seems like the entire town is here. One member of the crowd tells you they've all assembled for the fallow field axe throwing. Uh, she explains that after hanging, people play one pay. People play one obsidian to enter. I guess that should be pay one obsidian to enter. Throwing a short handled axe up at the gallows. Uh, try to sever the rope holding the dead criminal. Uh, participate in the game. I think I remember that we will still be able to uh, trade after the game is over. You watch a few keen locals throwing the axes. Some of which get quite close. Um... Uh, eliciting excited cheers from the crowd. You join the queue, and by the time you have reached the front, there is uh, a head full of money awaiting the winner. Malkin tries her luck, missing wildly with the first axe, whereas the second becomes embedded in a region of the hanging corpse that elicits winces from the male members of the crowd. Finally, a female warrior steps up and severs the nose with her first throw. The crowd cheers loudly, and she claims the prize. Uh, well... Never mind. Didn't get anything, but oh, food, food, great. So, is there anything we might be interested in? Force field, force strike. Eh, force field is very nice, but I don't want to lose uh, uh, the core lightning. So, I think I'll pass. Really, not a big fan of. Throwing, uh, nice. The, the part where it's a random ranged attack, I really don't like that. What is Wally Fire? Whenever you play a card, random ranged attack one, then this power loses one resilience. It's garbage. Run. Yeah, I don't think we want that. We have better armors. Don't think we want this. Uh, Elementalist can't use helmets, right? Okay, so we don't need the helmet either. We already have the rust plates. Everyone else has better armor, if I remember. Oh. No, I want defensive stance here. Okay, so we'll keep the one that we currently have. Uh, but what we can do, we can sell some of these items. I'll keep the, the gem. I think there's an event where uh, you want to have a gem in the inventory. Uh, let's sell the spear. Want to get as much cash as possible. Okay, probably want to find that gang that has all the supplies. Hopefully we'll be able to get some food there. Problem is we need to rest. That will cost us 0.5 food. But, yeah, we don't really have a choice. We have to rest. Going through forests, because more food is 0.2 food per tile, so that's quite annoying. Oh, there is something there. And there is the, the camp. I'm thinking about just ignoring this thing. This doesn't look like a place where we could find food. Well, this sounds very promising. But... Um, I think we're gonna make a cut here and continue next time. We did enough today and we need to find a trader that has some interesting sorts of stuff, some crafting materials perhaps, maybe some interesting uh, epic items. We have to spend the money for something. Running around 500 gold, uh, having nothing to do with it, doesn't sound like the best approach. Okay, well. well. Mm, as I said, we will continue next time. So I hope that you like this episode. I hope that you can join me next time again. And until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.